The movie tie-in video game, Spider-Man 3, it is very atrocious. I don't like this game. I think it's poorly made. And quite frankly, it's a Spider-Man game that's not even worth time to even Spider-Man fans. That's how bad this video game really is. You know, if I had to sum up two words for this video game, it is rage-inducing. Simply because of how infuriating the controls is with this game. And of course, everything else that goes on that makes this video game not even worth playing. Now, granted, there are two versions of the Spider-Man 3 video game. But I'm only going to be reviewing the one of the Xbox 360 and PS3. Because quite frankly, the PS2 and Wii versions are just downright horrendous. So, because this is a movie tie-in game, it loosely follows the plot of Spider-Man 3 the movie. You know my one big complaint about this game, it is the quick time events. My goodness, what the hell is that? That one part in the game with Spider-Man is swinging and the sword guy used quick time events. What was the point of that? It was pointless. It was a waste of money. Now don't get me wrong, I like quick time events. But if you're going to put quick time events, and I mean a lot of them in your game, at least give players warnings so you're not frustrated by them. You know, quite frankly, this story's a mess. And even the voice acting by most of the cast that returns, Except Chris and Dunst, they are very terrible in their voice roles. The only standout really in this game was J.K. Simmons. Even Bruce Campbell's voice role in this game was just awful. In the previous two movie tie-in games, he sounded confident and he had fun with it. In this one, he sounds like he don't want to be there and is very uninspired. And Tony McGuire, let's just say that he never gave a great performance in these movie tie-in games. You know, quite frankly, when I first played this game years ago, I was so mad that I was saying, what the hell happened? This could have been a spectacular game. The combat in this game, once again, ain't great. The webbing is pretty much useless once again. Even Spider-Man's well swinging in this game takes a step down from a Spider-Man 2 game simply because it's not as fast as you want it to be. And then, to make matters worse, there are the Mary Jane Thrill Ride missions. When I first had played these missions, I wanted to take my copy of Spider-Man 3 and just destroy it with a hammer. That's how angry these missions had made me. Seriously, you think the kid with the balloon was bad, but this is 10 times worse than that. One thing I will say though is that the black suit, it does offer some interesting aspects in terms of the combat. But you don't get it to more than halfway through a game. What the hell is that? I thought that was one of the premise of this game that you was able to use the black suit. But no, we don't even get that to way later on. And even still, it's like the enemies in this game, they're not smart. Obviously, the boss battles are dull and boring. And this is, without question, a Spider-Man game that is massively underwhelming. Do yourself a favor, if you haven't played this game, do not waste money nor time playing this because, quite frankly, this game is just horrendously bad for just so many reasons. It's like Treyarch to all the fun factor and entertainment value in Spider-Man 2, stripped it down, and then dumped them in Spider-Man 3. The spy store is gone. The fun combo system that Spider-Man 2 had is nowhere to be seen in this one. The combos in this game are pathetic and boring. In fact, as far as graphics is concerned, they're alright, but my goodness, what in the heck happened to the NPCs of this game with their eyes bulging out? Stuff of nightmares, I'll tell you. And not just that though, I really despise how they recon Scorpion's origin in the first video game. Why the hell they did that? Why they couldn't just keep that in? It's like Spider-Man Scorpions meet for the first time in this game. This game is frustrating, it's lackluster, and ultimately it is boring. 
I was bored with this game. This game is not even fun. You know, there's not much you can do once you beat the main story other than play through the game again with the black suit. But as far as a spy game, there are worse than Spider-Man video games out there, granted enough. But this one right here, it's not really worth my time. Even though I had played years ago, it's a game that I overlook and say, oh, I remember how bad that Spider-Man game really is. I'm getting this game at 5 out of 10. Yeah, this is a dumpster fire video game. It's very mediocre. And quite frankly, this game is just disappointing. You know, one thing that pissed me off in this game, they give you control of the new goblin towards the end of the game for like a minute. And I'm like saying, we got to learn these controls in a minute. What the hell is this? It's like Treyarch didn't even try their hardest. And it's hard for me to imagine why they thought this game was sufficient enough to even release in stores. Nonetheless, though, at the end of the day, this is a bad Spider-Man game with the lack of exciting features, the lack of replay value, and ultimately, you have a Spider-Man game that is dull and not a whole lot of good things going for it. This is a video game I will not recommend to other people out there, especially those who are Spider-Man fans. And that's my review of the 2007 video game Spider-Man 3. All right, leave your comments down below in the section and let me know what you think about this video game. Stay tuned. In the near future, there will be more Spider-Man video game reviews coming up. Okay, this is Slum Guy 172 saying, Peace out.